uh, with, with uh, just the stuff uh, that you have that you will be getting. Uh, this uh, audio. This was the first one uh, where we were able to start it, and this uh, second one. Uh, this was done day before yesterday. Uh, I'll tell you the context why we were building this autonomous system. This was from the first autonomous uh, two meters. Uh, So uh, the the goal there was to uh, so I, I'm Balaji. Uh, we are running a maker space called Humanto in Bangalore. We have not, not yet fully uh, opened up. This was this was just uh, the, the, the starting part. This was done on Monday. Uh, it was just using a simple relay and uh, and a Bluetooth controller. How a bicycle started. So it was, uh, the, the goal was to build much more frugal innovation to, uh, to also to show students what is what all we can we can do with the, uh, with the kind of devices that we have. Uh, so there is uh, both Internet of Things and robotics. Neither of them are, are actually new. Uh, like 15 years ago, back when we were in college, uh, my friend and I, uh, the, the biggest event that time was the September 11th and the whole thing. So my friend and I had this idea: why, why not create a flying uh, robot that will be uh, that can do image processing, that can uh, uh, find out these criminals and then go and attack them. So that was that was our idea. We we, we worked on for uh, six months. We put out papers and, and uh, that. Uh, but back then we didn't have a terminology called a drone. Um, then, but uh, in, in, the, in the the following years, this was actually the the US defense has actually implemented it practically. So this. That, uh, this, this killing uh, drones is already in operation using uh, image, image processing. But then we didn't have a way to like, uh, get this prototype going. We didn't have a actually a terminology called a drone. We didn't have a uh, the platform called an Arduino. We didn't have anything called GitHub. We didn't have a, 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 a way to even uh, buy these uh, components and then do it. And then uh, a few years later, I was uh, doing my master's. We were building disaster control robots. So the idea was. If there is a repeat of a Bhopal or even a smaller level disaster, our humans will be very, very slow to react to it. So we need, uh, we need bots to quickly react to it. Let's say um, we, we, we had um, uh, the bots there. And, and then the bots will, can have different kind of abilities. They can quickly react to it and then can uh, put out the disaster much, much more faster and much more safer than what humans can do. But even then, we didn't. Uh, we, we could not get more than one bot to be built. It was very, very expensive. And in, in our class, the the whole class was judged on a robot uh, wars. So we had to be building a walking robot. We not use any kind of wheels. Our professor ins uh, insisted on building uh, walking robots. Every day we had to fight in the league. Every day we had to change the designs. Every before every class, we had to change the design because we had to fight uh, somebody else in the league. And you need to know what the, what they would be doing, and you need to react to it. But then again, we, we didn't have this, the kind of tools uh, uh, we have right now. So it was, it was harder. And three years later, in Microsoft, we were trying on uh, things what is now called in the Internet of Things. So we had this platform called .NET Micro Framework that could connect to uh, Windows and it can connect to the Internet. So we were exploring various prototypes. So I was doing a prototype on, uh, on the refrigerator, a, a small magnet-like thing that can sync up with the various Outlook calendars for the whole family. And can like plan this uh, right in the refrigerator, so, so that can connect to the internet. Those small devices, magnet-like devices, that can be put on. So we worked on this multiple prototypes, but still, again, the the, the cost uh, and the and the community was not there. This I'm talking about 2008, still was not there. So now we are uh, like we, we have come to a point where there is a convergence happening in four different directions. That is now just now making things that were not possible like 15 years ago when we were trying out some of these things. So the convergence is happening in uh, the, 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 four, the following four directions. Then the first direction is the open source, whole open source movement. From the previous uh, start, the previous company that I was working for was about how do we take open source to the big enterprises. And, and they were very uh, successful in, in making big enterprises adopt open source. As open source revolution, like whether, whether it's Arduino or Raspberry Pi, the, the whole revolution is, is happening because it is an open source, because it is the people can build on top of the, uh, on top of existing innovations. 
So and, and GitHub again provides that whole uh, platform and, and community to build these things. So on one end, you have this uh, the GitHub sort of this uh, open uh, revolution that is happening. And on the second end, there's this, uh, this massive communication revolution was happening. In 2008, when we were building these uh, .NET micro framework for connecting these refrigerators and, and so on, we still we were constrained heavily by the bandwidth uh, we had and we didn't, uh, even 3G was a big luxury back then. And, and so the communication was, was always a limiting factor that, that has been significantly reduced in the last eight years to 10 years. So we have been, uh, this massive communication revolution that has drastically reduced the data and now Geo is, is uh, Geo and others is promising to uh, uh, bring down the data even more, uh, here, the even more significantly and the side effects will be massive. And on the third end, it's, it's, uh, it's the revolution happening uh, overall in hardware. So again, uh, uh, 10 years ago, we were still talking in terms of software terms, and now there is a, there's a real uh, great innovation happening in hardware. So that's how we were able to do, like whether it is an uh, uh, Internet of Things or uh, 3D printing or augmented reality. We are all getting into really, really uh, high quality hardware at a really cheap uh, price. So we didn't have a, a, like a prototype device like Arduino when we were studying. So again, the hardware revolution is, is, is happening. And the fourth revolution that is happening is a makerspace revolution. Uh, about, uh, starting from about five, six years ago, is this whole concept of makerspaces began, uh, began evolving. Although the, the, there were the hobby clubs and those things that were precursor to this, but this, this whole maker revolution that, that, uh, that started happening, that is providing this, this big uh, bulk of strength to it. So you have this maker revolution, you have the open source revolution, you have the communication revolution, and you know, the hardware revolution. All the four revolutions are now converging. And this is why uh, we can do stuff that we were not able to do 10 years ago. And this is why we need to completely rethink the stuff. The stuff. We need to start bringing up some of these ideas that we were been talking uh, since the 1960s. So many of these, whether it's Internet of uh, Things or robotics, the, the core ideas were talked even in the 1960s. So none of this is new. What we are used, we are close to executing those things that were just a uh, uh, science fiction. So uh, my mother-in-law was today morning was asking like why we are building this autonomous uh, uh, like two-wheeler. Like what, what what would be the purpose beyond just the coolness? So firstly, explaining her about the many benefits. One of the benefits is what like the, the car that we have is sitting um, idle at night. What if the car could like keep going on making trips to the airport, to the railway station, and so on throughout the night? It could be making. In the morning, you come to, to take it to the office, by then it could have already made 10,000 rupees in the bank. It could have, it could have made. So what if, if those things could make, we could drastically reduce the amount of capital investments we have to make, the, the amount of capital we are wasting by having cars parked on the road. So we, we, we waste multiple things. One is we have to get more cars because many of these things are lying idle. Second is we are wasting more capital. And third thing is we are, we are wasting our city roads. What of these these cars could get start autonomous and start moving around? Then we don't need to uh, we don't need to have these very expensive uh, uh, devices. We will have one fourth of the cars that can handle the current traffic, and we'll have so the, we'll have fewer parking issues. So and and, and, and this this is just a starting point. We, we think of robotics as something that is replacing people's jobs, but we will be getting creating completely new sectors that we cannot even imagine today. And these things can be started with these very, very simple devices that you have, like this, this semi-autonomous uh, two-wheeler we were able to do it within 700 rupees. We, we can do it much, much more frugally, like doing it, the, the, the key to this new innovation is all doing it frugally. Do not think in terms of thousands or lakhs of rupees. Try to think in terms of hundreds of rupees. What can I do in a few hundred rupees? Try to think of the frugality. That, that is one of the biggest trends we as Indians are, that is one reason why ISRO is, is succeeding so much. So the biggest strength we have is the, the frugal thinking. So when we are, when you are going to start building these uh, prototypes uh, with, with Arduino, start thinking in terms of the simple problems you can, can solve by, by this frugal engineering. This frugal engineering can create newer jobs, this frugal engineering can create newer innovations and it can make engineering much, much more fun. The other day when we were doing this uh, autonomous walk, uh, 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 this thing, uh, two-wheeler. The kids around the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the whole community, they just came around, they were asking questions about what a, print, what a 3D printer is, what this uh, the DC motor does, and all those things. That's what whole engineering is about. Engineering is about making things fun. We, 
we made it uncool we made it really boring by by having a whole range of unnecessary things thrown thrown onto engineering but ultimately we will try to bring the fun back into engineering engineering is about creating cool new gadgets so so start creating this is be a part of this maker revolution this maker revolution that has started 5 years ago and these days they are trying to bring the maker revolution to chennai be a part of this maker revolution maker revolution is about trying to look at society's problems and trying to solve it much much more frugally and trying to solve it by yourself not waiting for the government not waiting for some bigger company to do it if you see a problem do it and and you have the devices to it the, the kind of prototyping the devices that you have they are the state of the art uh, the, uh, thing so you have in hand that that the, the only bigger companies had that they cater to so you have these things you have these things that are very very affordable you can be a part of the maker revolution join one of the maker spaces here so they are they are uh, setting up something in chennai there are various maker spaces across india yes, be a part of this a maker space is a sort of a library where you can go in get these devices be a part of the community create something out of uh, out of fun do something uh, interesting and, uh, and one of these interesting things could could go on to become a common profit so thank you Facebook ले ऑन पनी लाइव स्ट्रीम में सुनो हाँ कनेक्ट पनी हो रहा है Yeah, hi all. I'm Guru Kailas, Dean Mechatronics, Admin College of Technology. Uh, we made this drone in our IoT kit. Uh, so, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for uh, for the purpose of uh, simulating the uh, drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the purpose of simulating the drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the purpose of simulating the drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the purpose of simulating the drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the purpose of simulating the drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the purpose of simulating the drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the purpose of simulating the drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the purpose of simulating the drone operation. So, what is the purpose of this drone? Uh, it's a drone that we actually designed for the actually we had a video 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 ponga we had a drone demo yesterday at the sanam university we were performing some drone demos and flying uh, flying rules in drone actually the components present in the drones are uh, four brushless motors and one flight controller and the receiver rx kila ponga and the receiver is contacted through a ground transmitting unit transmitter is not available now so i can show you after basic of common actually we made this drone in a 20k 20000 
stuff like uh, as we said that we are IoT geeks as a community, we are trying to set up a small maker space in Chennai also. So we do have our lab in Palli Karnai near Velacheri. So uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows this, but if you guys free on weekends, you can ping us, you can come to the lab, you can work. We do have a 3D printer also like Fabx Pro. Okay, this uh, video is in favor of the drone network. So now, Dr. Lakshmi Lashmi ma'am will give you an overview of Arduino and how to use Arduino for robotics. So she will be handling the class on Arduino now. So ma'am, and over this way. Good afternoon. This is Dr. Sri Lakshmi from Agni College of Technology. Just we can see what is Arduino. Do you know Arduino? How many of you know about Arduino? Yes. Arduino is a simple microcontroller which we can have open source on both the sides. That is open source on hardware as well as software. Right? So we go for Arduino and uh, nowadays uh, students are also playing with the Arduino. It's very simple. All the modules are available. We can easily buy it with a, a less cost. So everyone is using Arduino. Even students are playing with this. And uh, for robotics workshop, it is very, very useful. Let us see what is the basics of Arduino. Arduino uses the software IDE, which Arduino is a family of single board microcontrollers. What is single board microcontroller? Single CPU. Right. It's a single CPU. So it's open source for hardware as well as the software. Next. See, these are the guys who invented the Arduino board. So earlier days we used to have a PCBs. It's very difficult to give the connections, so we used to avoid electronics. Most of the guys are interested in electronics, but since we are not able to get the output, we avoid electronics. Whereas if we go for the Arduino, it will be easy to get the output. See, this is Arduino Uno board. Is it visible in the last? This is Arduino Uno board. So these are the digital I/O pins. And this is serial out and serial in. This is reset button. And here we are going to use the Atmega controller. Atmega 328 is used for Arduino Uno. And it is easily connectable with the system, laptop and other things. So you have your USB plug. And external power supply can also be used for uh, detaching your uh, Arduino board with, from the laptops. Right? You have your... Uh, 5 volt power supply and 3.3 volt power supply. 
because some of the sensors will be used with the 3.3 volt uh, so we are having uh, 5 volt power supply and the 3.3 volt power supply see these are the different types of arduinos most of you know the arduino you know and uh, this is the arduino lily pad where you can uh, connect with your uh, dresses right you can have a wearable board this is a wearable board easily you can have your electronic threads and you can easily build your system this is arduino mega 2560 this is a basic one and this is arduino mega 2560 right what are the things needed to have arduino first thing we need a system to program right either it can be a laptop or your system next uh, arduino board next you need a printer cable we used to call it as a printer cable normally you can have your printer cable where you can connect your laptop and your arduino board next see these are the shields earlier days we were designing the shields but nowadays we have a ready made shields so some of the shields are zigbee wifi shield and ethernet shield let us see what is the advantage of having the shields see this is the advantage of having the shields easily you can stack with the arduino board so that what happens your space will be very less you can connect all the shields with the stack this is the advantage of using the arduino board next see these are the kinds of sensors we can attach with the arduino board so very cheaper one 37 in one sensors you can buy this sensors all the sensors can be easily connected with the arduino as well as with the raspberry pi right because the raspberry pi deals with the digital uh, sensors so what they have done means uh, these sensors can be connected with the arduino board as well as the raspberry board so these are chips uh, when i bought it 37 in one sensor for 3000 then later i bought it uh, last year for 800 i think it is more cheaper now okay how to connect with the arduino so these are the steps to be followed for doing the arduino programming first download the arduino from the arduino sites arduino.cc you can download the arduino software i think our guys will give you the software next you have to configure the arduino software for the correct chip what does it means first i said there are different types of arduino arduino you know arduino 3560 there are many types of arduinos so you have to choose which arduino you are going to use that is the thing configure the arduino software for the correct chip then you have to configure the serial port that's very very important right most of you guys could have seen the device manager in your system there you have to go and select the com port you have to configure the com port it would be like the com 21 or com 19 whatever it may be you have to select the correct com port the next thing is you have to write your program let's verify or compile it uh, you know uh, as a software guys or other students you know you have to uh, compile your program after compiling you are going to dump your program into your arduino board then you are going to see it this is upload thing right now see this is the ide see here here we have to select the arduino board this is arduino you know i have selected there are different types of boards available this is Arduino IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. So this is IDE or editor. As um, Turbo C and other editors, we can uh, write our program in this editor. See here you have to select your serial port. Many devices would have been connected with your system. We have to see which is our uh, Arduino you know so that we have to select your device see this is the serial port where you are going to select your device this is the ide see here this is your menu bar 
and this is your toolbar. Here you are going to write your program and this is your status bar. Whether your program is right or not, you can see your status and you can see what are the errors available. Right? This is your IDE. When you open your system, right, when you open your IDE, you can look two functions. Uh, basic things for Arduino is that you need to know what is the basic structure of C and C++. It works with the C language only. Same structure like C. So you have a two functions. One is void setup. The other one is void loop. You know what is loop? Again and again your program will be executed. And since we don't have any condition, this program will be executed indefinitely. Right? It will be executed because it goes on running. What is void setup then? Void setup is nothing but your declarations. In C language you used to give like int a equal to 10. Here what you are going to do? You are going to declare your variables. Instead of variables you are going to say that here you are going to declare your pins. Since the Arduino deals with the electronics you are going to have your chip in the form of pins. The first pin, second pin. So what is the first pin? Whether it is the input pin or output pin. I have to declare whether my pin is input or output. All these things will be given in this void setup. A small interruption that we are giving the links to download the Arduino now so that you can download the Arduino and you can see in your system also so that it will be easy for you to do the simple programs. Give them why? I'll just give them all. The IP address is 10.134.125.56 slash IOT workshop. Is it visible on the back side? The password is, once again I will repeat, capital C, small u, capital B, B O N small, path, P A R K, 3, numeral 3, Amazon symbol and exclamatory mark. Why 
without speaking be near the uh, slides and recording we are going okay. out of sight sorry okay i thought of moving <laughs> Those are using the operating system for Windows. They can select the folder for uh, Arduino for Windows. And those are using uh, Linux software, Linux OS. Then they can download the Arduino for Linux. I think most of you right I think most of you got your uh, IDE see this is your IDE where you can see your menu bar and you can see a toolbar over here and this is your yes this is your station where you are going to write your program when you open your uh, Arduino you can find two functions Automatically it opens with the two functions, one named with void setup and the other named with void looper. Everybody knows that C language and C++ are the basics for Arduino and it is a case sensitive. So if it is a capital letter then you have to use a capital letter and if it is in small letter you have to use a small letter for keywords. 
right? The other things you can use on your own. Uh, for example, if you have any variable, you can mix up your uh, capital and small letters. So this is a sample code where you are going to do in the next session. After lunch, you can do the sample code. You can see a tick mark over here in the toolbar. You can see a tick mark over here where you can use for verifying your code. Whether your code is in the correct or not. Whether you have any syntax error or not. If there is any syntax error, it will show in this status bar. After that, you can... Next. If there is no error, then what you can do, you can upload your program into your uh, chip. It's very easy to upload your chip. See here, you can go here in the file menu, you can see upload to IO board. Either you can use this or you can see in your uh, system, you can see right arrow. If you use right arrow, automatically your program will be uploaded into your chip. See, after uploading, you can see a status bar, done uploading. Next. See, these are the terminologies used in the Arduino boards. Right? Instead of saying uh, IO board, we used to say it as main microcontroller and, um, sorry, uh, main mi microcontroller, we used to say it as microcontroller, whereas in Arduino, we used to call it as a IO board. And instead of saying add on both, we used to call it as a shield. Normally in C languages, you will have like untitled, right? Untitled. Instead of that, here we are going to use it as a sketch. Whenever you browse on the internet, you can see my sketch is not working. They used to ask in the forum, my sketch is not working. What is a sketch? It's nothing but our program. Our program is not working. Some errors are there. So they used to use the terminology called sketch. And these are the components. What are the components would be? Would be a sensors. Thermistors or LDR sensor, whatever it might be. You are going to sensor data. You are going to process your uh, sensed values in the microcontroller and going to give the outputs. Right? Then you are going to have your modules. These are the modules. GPS is one of the module examples. Next. You know, comments. We are going to use it for the documentation. If you want to see your uh, program after one year, I want to know what is happening in this particular area, then we used to give the comments. Uh, whatever we are using in the C language, the same comments are used here. Uh, double slash is used for a single line comment and the slash star or star slash will be used for the multi-line comments. Right. So comments, you can write your comments over here. Your uh, setup, that is your declaration can be given here. And void loop, you can give your program. Right. What is input and what is output? Normally we know that input will be given through your keyboard. You are going to give your input through your keyboard and you are going to see your output through your monitor. That is not in the case of your uh, electronics. You are going to give your input by using sensors. You are going to sensor data. For example, if you want to sense what is the um, uh, temperature in this room, then what you will do, you will have a sensor, temperature sensor, then you will sense it. The sensed value will be taken into the system or a microcontroller and you are going to give the output. Output can be either an indicator or a buzzer, whatever it might be. So everything will be a component R. See, this is your input. Input is the signal or information going into the board. That is your micro board controller. And output is any signal exiting the board. Right. Examples of your input are buttons, switches, light, sensors, flex sensor. Flex sensor, I think, you know, for hand gestures and other things, we use the flex sensor. Humidity. Temperature, etc. These comes under the inputs. And what are the outputs? 
LED, PC motor, servo motor, piezo buzzer, everything can be your outputs. Right. Main statements or main instructions, what we are going to use in your uh, Arduino board is these six. These are the big six uh, instructions. One is, whenever we get the data, the data can be either of digital or analog. Analog is the one where you are going to have a different values. And digital is the one where you are going to have only two values, either a zero or one. If you want to write a digital data, then you have to use digital write. If you want to use the analog data, if you want to write some analog data, then use analog write. If you want to read the data, then digital read off. If you want to read the analog data, analog write off. The other things are same. Whatever you are using in the C language, here also we use if statement, for, while, case structure, everything is same. All our basic structures we can use in this Arduino also. Okay. How to identify where to put the capital letter or small letter? Anyone can say? See here, digital write off. The digital whole word is small letter and if you use write, W is in capital letter. How to identify where to use the capital letter and where to use a small letter. How many of you know the Java? Right. What is the naming rule for class and naming rule for methods? First letter capital and camel C and method first letter small and camel C. Yes. See, here we are using the same um, nomenclatures for what we are using in the Java. Right. The thing is that if it is a class name, if there is multiple words, then each word first letter should be capital. For example, this is a classroom. This is a classroom. We have multiple words. In this, T should be capital. Is I should be capital. A, A should be capital. Class, A, C should be capital. Room, R should be capital. If it is a class. You know that uh, everything works under the object oriented programming. So in object oriented programming we used to have what is class. Class, class name we used to represent. So if you want to give some class name, every word, first letter should be a capital. Whereas in method, in C language we used to call it as a function. Whereas in Java we used to call it as a method. If we are using method, the main thing for uh, Main rule is that first word should be a small letter. The second or third word, whatever it might be, first letter should be a capital letter. So here also, see this is your method. This is the function we are going to call. Already they have written the function. So since it is a function or a method, so first word will be small and the second word, first letter will be a capital. If there is any third word, then third word, first letter will be a capital letter. So these are the things. Digital write, analog write. You need not memorize. If you know what is uh, method and what is class, easily you can use this one. Next. Right. As I said, here we are not going to use variables. Mostly we are going to say about your um, pins. If I want to say about the pins, the pins are I.O. pins. We used to call it as I.O. pins. Why? The same pin can be used for input as well as for output. So I have to differentiate whether I am going to use that pin as input or output. If I use it as input, then I have to say I am going to use this pin as input. So how to say? I have to say pin mode. Which pin? 13th pin, I am going to use it as the output. If it is output, you have to say it as output, input, all the words should, all the letters should be in capital letter. This is case sensitive where you are going to use it as a capital letter. Pin mode. This is again a method. So we are using small, uh, pin is a small letter and the mode M is capital letter. Pin mode of 13, comma output. Then digital write 13, comma height. See in uh, 
electronic side we can use high as 1 and 0 for low. So either you can use digital right of 13 comma high. Otherwise we can also use digital right of 13 comma 1. Both are same. It will work. And most of the time we use the delays. For 5 seconds the controller should be uh, in idle state. Then for 5 seconds it has to work. For 5 seconds my LED should get on. So if you want to do some blinking programs, then what you will do, you need some delay. Simple delay. In bracket you are going to say how many milliseconds. If you say thousand uh, delay of thousand, it is the meaning that one second there will be a delay. So uh, one thousand millisecond is equal to one second. So sample program we can do it later. So where we can use, as many speakers have said that we can use in many places. Arduino can be used for uh, many number of uh, automations. That's the applications, right? Do you have any doubts? In the afternoon session we can see how to write the program. Simple programs using Arduino. These are the basics for using the Arduino. Any doubts? Thank you. We can wait for lunch. Oh. Hmm? Okay. 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 Okay